Hi everyone, it's Lauren. I have a rather unexpected book haul for you today. I mean, not unexpected in the way that these books just magically appeared in my house and I had no idea they were turning up, but unexpected in um, the fact that I wasn't expecting this many books um, this soon after my last book haul. But that's okay, more books, more books, why not? The first lot of books that I have to show you today were sent to me by the Booksellers Association. They run campaigns such as the Books in My Bag campaign in autumn and also the Independent Bookshop Week, which this year is going to be between the 18th and the 25th of June. Last year, during Independent Bookshop Week, I did a bookshop crawl around London with Jen and Holly, which you can go and see um, here if you've not seen it before. And this year, Independent Bookshop Week is 10 years old, so they have asked 10 bloggers and bloggers to get involved in promoting the campaign and I am one of the people that they asked. One part of Independent Bookshop Week is the Independent Booksellers Awards for which there are three shortlists. They have an adult fiction category, a children's fiction category and also a picture book category. The Booksellers Association have very kindly sent me some of the books on the adult fiction list. And the first one of these is The Loney by Andrew Michael Hurley. Now this has been everywhere recently. It's won the Costa Book of the Year Award and it sounds really spooky and haunting. It's about two brothers. One of them's mute and they go to this place by the coast um, every year, I think. We catch up with one of the brothers many years later and something has happened when they were by themselves in this strange place called the Loney by the Sea and it sounds a bit like a mystery and we're finding out what's happening. Also nominated is The Shepherd's Life by James Rebanks, which is an autobiography of a shepherd in the Lake District in the north of England and he, um, he farms Herdwick sheep, which is a breed of sheep specific to Cumbria. And my mum read this a long while ago actually and because she, she loves the Lake District and um, she was really interesting to read this. And this is one of those books which sounds like it's probably not going to be that interesting or perhaps not appealing to a really wide range of people. But it's been a great success and I'm really excited to see what it's all about. Another one I'm really excited for is A God in Ruins by Kate Atkinson. Um, this is a semi-sequel to her previous book, Life After Life, but I believe it can be read standalone. I've not read any Kate Atkinson before, so I was really excited to be sent this. This follows the life of Teddy Todd, who is someone who goes into the Second World War, and then it's how he copes with his life after that. And it sounds like it's a look at how these huge dramatic events where terrible things happen affects not only the people involved in those events, but also the generations after them. And finally, we have another non-fiction, which is SPQR by Mary Beard. Mary Beard is a professor of, of classics and she has appeared in a lot of programs in the UK about ancient Rome. And this is a singular history of ancient Rome. I absolutely love Mary Beard's programs on the telly and I've been meaning to, to get something by her for, for a while. I wasn't sure that this would be a great place to start because it is just about Roman history and I wanted to perhaps learn a little bit more about the, the times in general before going straight into this, but this has had a really great response. So I'm really interested to actually read something by her, some of her more academic work. Moving away from the Bookseller Awards shortlist, um, Penguin also very kindly sent me Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. This has been absolutely everywhere. It sounds like a real tearjerker. This is a romance novel about a woman who's lost her job and a man who's had a motorbike accident and then their lives collide and probably terribly sad and upsetting and heartbreaking things happen. But I've not read a book like this for a really long time, since maybe uh, One Day by David Nichols. A couple of weeks ago, Jean from Bookish Thoughts was down in London to visit her university professors, so uh, we went for breakfast, and she very kindly got me a book for my birthday, which was The Magician by Somerset Maugham. Now, I felt like a right idiot at breakfast, because apparently this is an author I should have heard of, and I completely had never heard of him. Um, but this sounds really cool because it sounds like it mixes 19th century kind of Paris bohemian culture with like the occult or, or magicians or something. So it sounds really interesting. Jean really enjoyed it and she was trying to think of a book that she'd read and liked and perhaps I hadn't read. Gallic Books contacted me a few weeks ago asking if I would like to be sent the new uh, book by Muriel Barbary, which I absolutely did, and it is called The Live of Elves. You might remember that Muriel Barbary wrote The Elegance of a Hedgehog, which um, I've heard really great things about, and this sounds like a bit of a modern changeling um, fairy tale myth. It's about two foundling children, one found in Burgundy in France and the other in Spain, I believe, and as they grow up they have some very strange talents, and I guess that 
the implication is that they're fairy changelings or something like that. It's written in a very interesting structure, having flicked through it, and this is my first Muriel Barbary, so very excited about that. Then the other week, while I was waiting for my friend at Waterloo Station, I went into the foils in there, because of course I always pass my time in bookshops, and just somehow, like, ended up buying books. The first one I got was another J.D. Salinger, and that was Raise High the Roof Beam Carpenters and See More An Introduction. I read Franny and Zoe last year, and I think it was one of my favourites of the year in the end, and I really, really enjoyed it. These stories follow the same family, the Glass family, and I think any of these books can be read in any order, and I enjoyed Franny and Zoe so much that I'm really interested to read more about this family and get more of an overarching um, view of their story. And the second one that I picked up, which was a complete whim, and but I just had to have it, was Their Eyes Are Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. Now this is one of those sort of great classic American books that I've never read. Um, she was a forerunner of Toni Morrison and Maya Angelou and um, Alex Walker, and this book appears to be about a young girl who is kind of married off to a much older man and how she goes continues on with her life. And though I don't know very much more about the plot than that, this is just one of those absolutely iconic works that has inspired so many other authors. And when I saw it on the shelf, in this beautiful um, cover as well, I just kind of had it in my hand and then I owned it. <laughs> so really excited about that actually. I'm very pleased to have finally bought it. And finally, I saw on Twitter that Laura Bates, who founded the Everyday Sexism Project, has a new book out. And as soon as I saw that, I just went on Book Depository and was like, right, I'm getting it, don't even know very much about it, but I was very excited to read it, and it is called Girl Up. And from the blurb, it looks like it is talking about um, different things that, are t that women are told, different things that are put on women and girls as they grow up, and perhaps debunking some myths about femininity and about being a woman and calling out sexism. I have been a follower of the Everyday Sexism Project from for a few years now, probably since it was fairly in its infancy, and I know for me, it was something that really solidified my own beliefs in feminism and kind of made me realise a lot of everyday minor stuff that you never really think about. And so I think Laura Bates is a really amazing woman and I'm really looking forward to reading this. And at the same time as buying this, I sort of felt like I had to buy Everyday Sexism as well. <laughs> I know that Jean read this book a few months ago and really, really loved it. And it really inspired her. Well, it was one of the reasons I think that inspired her to start the Feminist Orchestra um, Book Club, um, which is on Goodreads. As much as I've loved the Twitter project, I've not actually read the book. And something that I've been wanting to do um, soon, maybe in a few months time, is do a video talking about different feminist literature and different books about feminism just from whatever your prior experience and for different levels of familiarity with the topic. So I thought if I'm going to do that, I better read some of these books so that I can recommend them or not. So very, very exciting to finally have these. So I would love to hear from you if you have read any of these books already. I am very excited to get to them. If you're new, you can subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button just underneath the uh, left-hand corner of this video and I will have a chat to you in the comments and see you in my next video. Bye. This is a really fun book. It's about a woman called Annie who discovers an old painting in a junk shop, which then turns out to be an undiscovered masterpiece. And it's a really interesting look at the art world. It starts at the end. You start at the auction for the painting.